How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Let's open up some figures. Today I've got the Masters of the Universe Origins, Trapjaw, and Manny Faces, as well as this here, Splinter, from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I've been turtle what the, what the f*** is a Turtles? From the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates line from Super 7. And I've also got here, the Baxter Stockman. Another figure I'm super excited to be popping out of the package, so let's just jump right into this bad boy with these two first. Let's start with Trapjaw. So, of course, the packaging is the same as all the rest of the Retro Play Origins figures. And on the back, you've got some images of what you could do with him. Apparently, you can open his mouth, and you can see that the gun goes onto his hand there, of course. And then you got this fantastic artwork right here up top. The cybernetic criminal can literally arm himself with any weapon he needs for a battle. As well as other figures in the series, I don't have Scareglow, and I don't have Orko either. Actually, I must confess. I never did find Tila or Beastman yet either. I am so far behind. All right, out he comes. Oh, that did not go as planned. I was expecting him the bubble to just come right off the cardboard. That, that's a mess. Okay, so here's everything Trapjaw, his accessories, and the mini comic. This mini comic is actually different than the previous one that was released, in that this is a completely different story. You could pause to read this if you'd like to. There's the first two pages, and then here is the next two pages, and I haven't even read it myself. I'm just going through it quickly for you guys, and then here is the next two pages. Voila, and the back just shows more figures that come in the series. Trapjaw also came with these three accessories here. You've got the gun, you've got the, uh, the pincher hand, and then you've got the uh, hook, the hook hand. That is the most non-aggressive hook I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Here's that laser gun, the cannon, the bang bang. And this thing here kind of reminds me of those like the, the little extendy hands that, you know, when you can't reach your, your soda in the back of the fridge or whatever, and you, you have that thing and you grab it and it goes and it grabs onto it. That's what this thing here kind of reminds me of. Also, each of the weapons is stowable right here on his uh, skull and crossbones weightlifting belt. The little nub just goes boop right in the hole like that and boop right in the hole like that. Weapon storage achieved. And just like with the original one, the belt is removable. That's why you see all the vintage ones on eBay. Half of them don't have a belt because kids took it off and lost it. But look, here's his fuzzy pink underpants slash belt combo. And of course we have the figure itself, which I don't have the original one to compare it to. Sorry about that. I'm not a Motu buff. I'm just someone that played with the toys as a kid and liked them. All of my brain power was taken up by DC toys. And these really were something that I liked, but they were kind of an afterthought by comparison. And I had like four or five He-Man figures and that was it. I will tell you, judging by the pictures that I've seen, this guy looks a whole lot more brighter, more neon, more in your face with the color. And one thing's for certain, it definitely matches the aesthetic of all the rest of the Motu figures that I've opened up at this point. He's going to look fantastic posed with all the rest of them. Here's his arm here. He's like, what am I supposed to do with this? There's nothing in there. What am I going to do? I can't defeat He-Man and make Skeletor happy with this thing right here. He's going to throw me down in a dungeon. So let's save him some trouble and stick all of his accessories on. So there's the first one. There's the, uh, the pinchy hand, the claw. Oh, oh, it's cool. Oh, and he also bends at the elbow and rotates. Oh, that's cool. Why am I getting into articulation before the articulation segment? I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's got the hook, the unassuming, not scary at all hook for when he needs to, uh, hook things. And we have his gun, which is, in my opinion, the coolest one. I'll probably keep the gun on the body. And check it out. His mouth opens and closes. There's nothing in there. It's just black, but it is kind of neat that they decided to give him that kind of an action feature. I've always thought it looks like he's wearing a football helmet. Fitting, since these guys are all built like linebackers. So now let's move on to the next one. Everyone's favorite, Manny Faces. Turn head for three different faces. Modern posing, retro play. They all say that, don't they? On the back of the packaging here, you see some fantastic artwork with Manny faces showcasing at least two of the faces. And then you've got the instructions here on how to make it work. Turn, he's human. Turn, he's a robot. Turn, he's a monster. And of course, other figures in this wave, including Orko and Scareglow. He is going for a butt pile right now online. The scalpers are having a heyday with Scareglow. The actor, Manny Faces, changes his face to portray different roles on stage and in battle. All right, let's see if we can take this guy a little bit delicate. No, the same thing happened. The whole, wow. I'm just opening this like I was a kid in 1985 or 84. Oh, well, I wasn't going to keep the packages. Anyway, not a huge deal. There's the comic. There's the figure, the accessories, pull them out by bubble. Same comic as last time, so I don't really need to show you that. Let's just go straight to the figure. All right, and here he is out of the package, which I would be way more excited for, except for mine's got 
a great big ugly nasty scuff right there on the front. Uh, seriously. Ace quality control, boys. Here's his gun that he comes with. A great big orange flavored looking gun. Seriously. This looks like a candy. Does this not look like a candy? And I think overall, he looks... This looks cool. This is probably one of the coolest looking figures in the entire series so far. And all that detail has been sculpted onto him. Again, I don't have an actual old school version of this guy to compare him to. But here's a picture of the classic one next to the one that we're reviewing today. You can see that there definitely are differences between the two. Like, like absolute differences. Unless you actually have the other one in hand, though, you won't even notice, and this looks just as good as the original. For that famous face-changing feature, you just twist a little knob here on the top, and you get the monster face. Not bad. And then you turn it again, and you got the robot face. I think for the rest of the video, though, I'm going to keep it on the regular face. But I can also, if I really want to, I can turn the whole thing around like that and he can do the whole thing like this. For both of these guys, we know what kind of articulation they're gonna have. They got the rounded, whoopsies, I pulled his arm off. That's okay, nothing to freak out about. Apparently I didn't know this, but with my last Motu figure review, I had no idea that the limbs are actually supposed to come off for swappage. Because, uh, this is cool, I suppose. Either way, the articulation for these guys, we know exactly what it's like. You got the rounded hinge there, and it can go, oops, it, wow, these limbs really just come off so easily. can go around like that. You got the another rounded hinge right here, and the elbow, and the, the hinge here. Do we really need to go over the articulation? Oh, it just came off again. Wow, they really do come off easy. As usual, though, I do like the fact that these Motu figures have the little ball joints in the groin, and we're not stuck with that elastic band, that little rubber thing that would just dry out and the legs would snap off. This is definitely a much cooler way of doing the articulation. And then you've got the knees, and they rotate, and they go about that far, and you got the ankles. What can we say? If you collect these figures, you know pretty much what you're going to get. I will say with the figures that have a thing that covers their boot, like Manny Faces, that definitely gets in the way, but you've got articulation right here at the top of the boot. Oh, and actually, look at that. They share the exact same boot. Whoa, dude. They share the exact same legs. Uh, whoa. Ah, well, all the power to them. If they can get more figures out of the same body parts and only have to reuse them a little bit, that means we get more figures. And you really, I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice until I looked at them side by side and I was looking to see if they were the same body parts. And I only noticed because of the ankle articulation being pretty much crap in both of them. <laughs> Moving on. And now let's open up this bad boy. Super 7's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Baxter Stockman. All right, so here's the front of the box. Got the old Baxter Stockman face on the sewer lid there. Baxter Stockman down the bottom. It's all purple and pretty. You got Ultimates right here on the top. On the back side of the box, you got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo. And on the sides, it's just purple and... And, and more purple. It is kind of a nice sort of matte color though. I like this a lot. Let's pull the sleeve off the top. Oh, oh there we go with that suction again. Whoa, oh, that's beautiful. That is fantastic. I had the original Baxter Stockman when I was a kid and ah oh, man, this, this is just, this is nice. You can see that he's gonna come with a whole bunch of fantastic stuff to actually accessories that are supposed to be like he had with the original. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure that he came with the, well, let's just take it out first. No, let's look at the rest of the box first, yes. Here's the top of the box, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You got the side, it's made to look like a brick wall with graffiti on it, just like with the Raphael I previously reviewed. And then on the back, you've got this whole brick wall motif as well, and a little write-up here. I'm gonna read this, and I'm gonna, you know, you can, you can skip forward if you'd like to. Baxter Stockman, a man with the mind of a scientist and the body of a common housefly, buzzes around town, annoying the turtles and other decent reptiles. Created accidentally in Dimension X by a malfunctioning disintegrator unit, Baxter flurried himself into an avenging frenzy. Convinced by Shredder that the turtles were solely responsible for his rebirth as an insect, Baxter now vents his hostility hostilities towards one half-shelled... Yeah, nope. <laughs> Baxter now vents his hostilities towards our half-shelled heroes. There. All right, let's open this bad boy up. Let's get him 
out of his fancy window box. Man, this is just such a cool presentation in general. Now, unlike with the He-Man figures, I am going to keep the packaging for the Ultimates uh, in good condition because I really, really like the boxes that they come in. Resealable, oh wow, look at that. That looks just as cool out of the box. Okay, let me get everything out of here and then we'll continue on with the video. Okay, wow, that was an ordeal getting out of the package. He was really tightly fastened in there. Anywho, he comes with six extra hands, which is actually three extra sets. He comes with the weapons rack, but he also comes with not only the same weapons that you see here in the rack with the fly swatter do and then the laser gun, and I don't really know what that is. But he also comes with the exact same accessories with the fly swatter and then the zappy do the little gun over here. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what the gun's called. This does look like the, the turtle whacker. I can't, I, I, listen, I haven't owned this figure, the original one anyway, for like 25 years, 30 years, 30 years probably. And unfortunately, there's no list of what the, the comes in the box on, on the outside. Like, what's this piece for? I mean, it, it looks like it would, you know, click onto the gun or something, but I mean, does that mean that like, it's like, like a, like a swatter gun? I honestly don't remember. Nice touch there, painting the flattened turtle though. Although, what did that little turtle ever do to bother Baxter Stockman? This is a bitter, bitter man right here. If you get the laser gun or the turtle whacker, you'll find that both these weapons fit in his hand really nicely, and he does come with an ample number of hands for any situation. For strangling, for punching, and just generally having a temper tantrum, and for doing the old switcheroo with the laser gun and also the turtle smasher. Now, I'm not going to pull all the gray weapons off the weapons rack because, I mean, I'm going to pose them with these ones anyway, so... But this is what they look like close up. I do recall the original weapons being maybe a, a green color. I don't think that they were gray. Yeah, crap on a stick. I totally forgot to put this guy in the first shot with Baxter Stockman. He also comes with this here mouser. Mouth opens like that, so he's got mouth articulation. Got a foot on his face like that. Very cool looking. I like this. He's got legs like that, so you can open his mouth, his articulated legs, and you can have him chasing after something to chomp on it. And he's even got head articulation, or rather, neck articulation. So this is actually a pretty well-articulated, well-constructed little mouser accessory for Baxter Stockman. Up close, this thing has more than every bit of the detail than the original one had, with ten times more of the articulation. Look at that Baxter Stockman face. I love it. The Baxter Stockman was one of my favorite bad guys that I had out of all of my Ninja Turtles figures, so I had to have this guy. Look at the bow tie there and the little fly veins. He's got the syringe in the front pocket. This jacket is actually a separate piece made out of a softer rubber that fits over top of the torso there. Then you got, it would have been cool though, if they had to put a little bit of yellow in the teeth there. I mean, I understand why they didn't, I guess. The original didn't have it, but it still would have been kind of neat. Then you got the, look at all the detail on the legs there. Oh, that looks like grody and like fly, like, ugh. You got his little fly tail there stuck inside of his trousers. You got his lab coat that's been all burst open with the extra fly arms sticking out the back. Oh, those are cool. That, that These are very cool looking. You got the hands. The back of Baxter Stockman's ginger haircut, and then you got the fly wings right here that actually have some articulation to them. Not a bad figure at all. More than not a bad figure. Rather, an excellent figure. Fairly well articulated too, with the rounded hinge up here in the armpits, and he's going to have the single jointed elbows that rotate. He's got articulation in the wrists. The head doesn't really, it can spin around like that, but doesn't really do a lot of bibbly bobbly. The wings, which are articulated, if you want them to stick out flat like so, then they're going to have to be up because when you want the wings to be down lower, they flatten out like that, which, you know, I guess that's just. What it is, I suppose if you were a fly flying around, you would, you'd want your wings to be flat for flapping, but for posability, it would have made more sense to have the wings kind of off to the side, but you'll notice that there really is no way to do that. The second that you put the wings up like that, they kind of, yeah, they don't, they don't really do what I'm, what I'm hoping they would do. Like, it'd be nice if you could rotate them this way as well. He's also got the ball jointy groin. Fairly good, really awesome, actually, range of articulative motion there. He's got single-jointed knees that bend quite 
well and also rotate. And then he's got the hinged ankle pivot. Whizz, I'll get you, turtles! What a beautiful, beautiful figure. I love this very, very much. Certainly happy with this purchase. And now, finally, let's open Master Splinter, who is also from the Super 7 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates line. And now he's all out. You got Splinter's face on a sewer lid, all green packaging. It says Ultimates up here at the top. On the other side, you got that TMNT logo. The whole thing is a nice shade of fluorescent turtley green. We're gonna pull the sleeve off. Oh, wow. That's a really, that's a really nice figure. That, that's nice. And just look at all these accessories it comes with. Oh my goodness, wow. I can't wait to get them out of the box. I actually hate having to show you the box with these guys because I just can't wait to get them out. You got green bricks and you got the splinter down here. You got more kind of a green spray painted brick motif on the side. And the other side has the exact same thing. And then on the back, you can read Splinter's sp Splinter. My God, learn to talk much, Brad. You can read Splinter's little bio. Splinter, a mutant rat, is the philosophical and martial arts teacher, the sensei to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He is a master in ninjutsu and has taught the Teenage Turtles the secrets of the ninja, the Bushido code, and the warrior's way. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Let's carefully pull this guy out of the box without destroying it. Carefully slice off the tape so we don't wreck the package. Oh, I left fingerprints on it. Oh, man. I knew I shouldn't have had popcorn during the intermission of making this video. All right, my rat buddy. Out you come. Booyah! Now we're back. And oh my god, that's a lot of stuff. That is so much stuff. He comes as a cute little turtle. Oh, oh well, that... Okay. That was uncalled for. Here is the interchangeable rubber gi that Splinter wears, or doesn't wear, depends if you put him inside of this thing. I'll probably keep him in the fabric one, but I do like the fact it's got some shading and it looks really tattered. It is kind of thick. That is some very thick rubber, but it'll look really cool in the figure if you decide that this is the way you want to go. And yeah, it, it looks like, like it's supposed to, I guess. It's got a little circle on the belt. Whereas the original one actually came with a fabric gi just like this one comes with a completely different fabric. I like this actually better than the original. The sleeves have been sewn. You got some uh, some hems all around the collar here. So that's nice. This thing's not just going to fall apart on you. Although the back tail and the bottoms, I do like the fact that that has been left unsewn because it is supposed to look like an old kind of frayed beat up gi. So if this bottom part and around the tail frays, I'm okay with that. Not not a huge fan of the belt though and the great big white Santa Claus belt buckle. I do wish that they had have manufactured some kind of belt to go around the gi that looks more like this one, but I think in general this is certainly a very satisfying piece of clothing for Master Splinter. And since we got Master Splinter in hand, we might as well do this backwards and look at Splinter. And then the accessories has been sculpted fantastically, all of his brown fur. There is some shading inside the brown fur too. You've got these Taped, taped up ankles right here. Looks good. You could even see the texture of the fabric of the tape. Same thing for the tail here. A completely different texture for his rat tail. I like this very, very much. And then the face looks very much like the original Splinter did with the white eyes and the gray on the face and the great big rat nose and teeth. I don't recall Splinter looking like this very much in the cartoon, but these are not intended to look like they did in the cartoon. These are intended to look like the original figures, only with more detail and more articulation. And this does exactly that. Splinter also comes with a bow and three arrows. The bow looks pretty cool. You got the wrap around the handle there. The wood grain looks kind of fantastic as well. You got the staining in here like that. Comes with a bouncy, bouncy string, which is kind of cool. And when we look at the arrows, they match the bow very, very much. You got the tips here that have been painted silver. They look like wood. Would have been cool if the feathers were actually painted too, but hey, you can't win them all. Those are kind of cool. All right, let's see if we can get this guy to go straight back. 
That's kind of neat. Not that it really has to be able to shoot the arrows. Not, not that anyone's going to be shooting. The original Splinter figure did come with a bow. I think the arrow kind of went through the middle, though, as was what they did with bow and arrow toys back in the day. Here's a little turtle that he comes with. A pre-mutated turtle. Is this one Donatello, Michelangelo, Leonardo, or Raphael? We'll never know. Because he's not wearing his funny color bandana of red, purple, blue, or orange. So, we have no idea, but... Certainly a very cute looking accessory. He's got his steaming hot beverage. I like how they have the, the steam effect actually coming out of the top. It would have been kind of neat if you could pull this out and just have the cup, but really I'm probably not going to pose him with this anyway, and this still is a very thoughtful accessory. He also has two little tiny ninja stars. Here's a closer look at Splinter's hidden blade walking stick. You just open it up and ta-da, he's got a blade there, so don't try and hold this guy up and mug him because he'll just chop your nuts off and you won't even see it coming because he's got the blade hidden right here in his walking stick. He also comes with another walking stick or perhaps an oversized Harry Potter wand. Expecto Mutato! More interchangeable hands than any one guy could ever need. He's got some open hands for when he's practicing his Tai Chi and Karate. Some crouching tiger hidden dragon hands for when he's gonna claw your face off. And two fisted hands for when he wants to punch you in the nuts. And finally, here's a look at that weapons rack. It looks very much like it did old school when I was a kid. It's like the same color brown. Okay, so for Splinter's articulation, I opted to take all of his clothes off, his gi, which means you'll see the rubber gi on him later on in the video because I'm gonna put that on him after I do this. The torso articulation, it's not a ball joint as one may think, and if it is, it's a very ineffective one. It, it really just pivots, but it pivots kind of on an angle, so it doesn't just go straight round. You'll notice that his head kind of turns slightly down on an angle as it turns. And there's nothing in the waist here, so the torso articulation for this splinter is just abysmal. For splinter's groin here, you can see he's got those rounded hinges, and there actually is a fairly large, fairly satisfactory amount of articulative motion and possibilities there. You will take note though that Splinter only has that single jointed knee. It is more than 90 degrees, so that's something, and it also rotates. And as I always say, if it's not 90 degrees, if it rotates, I'm certainly okay with that. Although, as a ninja rat, it would be kind of cool if there was more that way. But then, again, it's always form versus function. Sometimes too much articulation wrecks the form of the figure, so I'm not going to complain about that. I, I think this is okay. And then the ankles right here, he's got the rounded hinges that are also ankle pivots. And that's quite a bit of upsy downsy motion there. Now let's talk about the head articulation. This is one that really actually kind of surprised me. I would figure that Splinter would have had some kind of a hinge setup right here. That way you could get more up and down motion with his head. But as you can see, that's actually not the case. It really is just a ball joint in there with very, very limited range of motion. And inside of his arms here, you have the rounded hinges, which actually do offer a fairly reasonable range of motion. I will let you know that right here, this piece of his hinge actually wants to get stuck on the plastic when you're trying to lift it up. you got to kind of work it backwards, and then you can lift it up like that, and it's actually not too bad. Take note, there is no bicep swivel. However, you do have a single jointed elbow that is... Unfortunately, not even 90 degrees, but it does have some rotative round and round properties and each and every hand comes with a little hinge in there, so there's round and round and back and forth. I think, all in all, if you're somebody who really wanted this figure to be super articulated, well, you're getting something better than the original. However, I would give this, say, a, I don't know, a 48%, 50% articulation pass, if that is your thing. And I guess while we're here, we might as well stick on that rubber gi while we're at it, so you can get an idea of what it looks like with him wearing this one. This actually looks a lot more uh, like the cartoon than the one that comes on the body, the fabric one. Yeah, so if you're looking for, like, cartoon accuracy, well, this one definitely looks better. Also, I forgot to mention, there is an articulation point here at the table. It's a rounded hinge, so it's going to do what a rounded hinge can do, and tail's going to be all whippy-wappy around. This here, this point right here, is actually not a point of articulation. It's just where this part of the tail connects to this part of the tail. It actually, mine doesn't move, n not at all. 
Certainly, it will be interesting to see how this Splinter stacks up against the soon-coming NECA animated version of Splinter. But aside from the fairly limited articulation range, no complaints here. I think that he looks like a great modern updated approximation of the original. Anyway, I guess that's really it for the day. I mean, I, I haven't uploaded on this channel in a while on account of the fact I've been too busy doing other things and uploading on the other channel. And this channel really wasn't supposed to have, you know, a, a schedule for how often I would upload. This is just sort of like an extras channel for things that I want to talk about and review that aren't DC. But I have these four figures and I figured it's high time that I made a video and I thought, why not do things a little bit differently and think outside of the box as I'm taking things out of the box and review four different figures, two from each frame franchise in one video and do things in a much more simplistic fashion. I hope you guys have liked it. If you haven't, I understand because you're probably used to me doing things a different way. But if you have, you know what you can do. You can click that like button and let me know that you liked the video. And, and if not, I don't know, you can tell me how much you hated it or whatever. But even, you know what, even if you didn't like it, it's not even, you know, it, it just is what it is. It's okay if you didn't like it because you don't have to like everything. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like these figures and you certainly don't have to like this video. Anyway guys, I thank you so much for watching. I really, really do honestly appreciate it. And I will see you next time with the next one, whenever that is, hopefully sooner than later. Bye for now and take care.